Today we're going to take footage with extreme visible banding in the sky like this and remove it with a tool within DaVinci Resolve 15. The reason that this happens is because a lot of the cameras that we shoot with has a codec that is 8-bit and 420 chroma subsampling. Now basically what this means is that there are actually 16 over 16 million colors to choose from, which actually sounds like a lot. Now as far as the 420, it means you have four columns, two rows, two colors on the top row, and then no new colors on the bottom row. Now that does sound like a lot, but then you consider something like 10-bit and that has over a billion different colors. So long story short, the reason that you're seeing a lot of banding is because the transition from one shade of a color to its neighboring shade is a little more abrupt because you don't have a lot more to choose from. It's a little bit of an oversimplification of the whole thing, but just know that when you see stuff like a flat blue sky, it's very possible that you could see this banding in your footage. So I already have a node pulled up here within DaVinci Resolve. Now that's the adjustments I had. I took some flat footage and I add a little more contrast, some saturation. So I'm adding a new node here. And this is where we're going to make our adjustments. Now what I'll do is change the qualifier to 3D. And this allows us to draw a line and then we can select everything in the sky and it will make a selection for us. I'll come over here to the highlight mode and what I usually like to do is go into the black and white option. Now you can see in the top left corner, there's a little bit of black peeking out. So what we can do is go down to clean white and that will take care of most of what we need to do in that corner. There's still some more there. So what I'll do is choose the option to add and then I'll choose the selection in the top and that will include that in our selection. I'm scrubbing through the footage. You'll notice that everything appears to be okay. The trees look like trees and there's nothing that's really sticking out as far as the sky is concerned. I'm going to zoom in on the footage a little bit. When we get close in like this, you'll notice that there is a little bit of gray. So I'll come down to the matte finesse and then we'll head over into page two. What I'm going to do is choose the black clip and that's anything that's a dark gray. We'll move that over to black and we can do the same thing with a white clip and anything light gray will move over to white. I've actually done a video about this and I'll include that in the card and in the description below. I'll scroll back out. I'll remove the highlight, but you can see that it, it's a pretty good representation of the selection that we made. I'll remove the option to show path so we can see what we're looking at. You'll notice in the trees there, there might be a little bit of chromatic aberration maybe, and this is something we'll just have to keep an eye on. Now I'll head over to the right hand side where I have the open FX panel open. I'll scroll down. And what we're going to do now that we have the selection is put the D band option on top of our footage. And you can almost see immediately it gets rid of those banding lines. Now it's very possible that you might see them because this is being compressed and put on YouTube. So it's being compressed down to eight bit again, but I'll toggle it off and on. And actually I'll make this a little bit bigger. Right now we don't have the banding. I'll remove the option and you can see it's a lot more evident. And what I'm going to do is move the radius up a little bit and that will just increase the strength. We'll turn it off and on just to see the side by side and just make sure it's not affecting things such as the tree in the middle there. And it appears that the deband option has done a good job. I'm scrolling through the footage here and this is with the effect off. And toggling it off and on, you can see the difference. Now, potentially one of the first thoughts you may have is why don't we just make that selection and then go ahead and drop maybe a blur option on there and that will just blur out the lines. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a Gaussian blur on there. As you can tell, it's done a pretty good job, but if you look at the top of the trees, they've started to become extremely blurry. The other thing I have to do is choose the replicate option because the stronger the blur is, the more it pulls in the edges of the frame. Now, of course we can lower the strength, but now we're introducing the banding back in. So it's a little bit of a seesaw effect where you wanna bring the details in the trees back, but you don't wanna bring all the banding back. I'll come back to the beginning of our footage and what I'll do is grab a still. This way we sort of have a side-by-side -side comparison of 
using blur and using the band option. If you keep an eye on the tree, I'm going to disable and enable the Gaussian blur effect and you'll notice the impact that it's having. So right now what I'll do is put the D band effect back on there. If you keep an eye on the tree now, there's really no change whatsoever except in the sky. I'll pull up the gallery and then I'll pull up the still that we grabbed from the blur option. In the top left corner, if I toggle it on and off, you may be able to see the difference. But what I'm doing here is a wipe. So when I wipe to the left, that's showing the screenshot that we got from the blur. And if I wipe back to the right, that's what the deband option is doing. And you'll notice that the deband option is quite the elegant tool. Now guys, I'll have to mention that this option is only available in the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. Don't forget it's a one-time payment of $2.99. Between OpenFX tools like this and the noise reduction tools included within DaVinci Resolve, I highly recommend this program. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Go ahead and check out the website. And if you have any questions about something in Resolve or if you have any suggestions for a future tutorial, I'm very open to ideas. Head over to our Facebook group, let me know, and maybe your suggestion will be my next video. Talk to you soon.